Welcome, curious minds, to a world of knowledge and discovery. Hello, YouTube friends. Join us as we unravel the mysteries surrounding Joe Tate. Joseph Tate, May 15, 1937, March 10, 2021, was an American sports broadcaster who was the play-by-play -play announcer on radio for the Cleveland Cavaliers of the National Basketball Association NBA and both TV and radio for the Cleveland Indians of Major League Baseball. With the exception of two seasons in the early years and illness during his final season, he was the Cavaliers' radio announcer from the team's inception in 1970 through the season. He won the Basketball Hall of Fame 2010 Kurt Gary Media Award. The time has come to unravel the secrets behind early life and education and gain a deeper understanding. Tate was born in Evanston, Illinois, and was raised in Amway, Illinois. Growing up, he played basketball, football and soccer, and also enjoyed writing. He attended Monmouth College in Western Illinois, where he began his radio career. He worked various jobs, including play-by-play -play on a local radio station in Monmouth WRAM, Sports Reports, and Operations Manager. He graduated in 1959. After college, Tate spent three years in the United States Army Security Agency. After the Army, Tate bounced around, spending time in Decatur, Illinois. From 1966 to 1968 he was the official voice of the Ohio Bobcats, served as sports director for WOUB, and taught sports gassing at the Athens Institution. He next served as the network voice of Indiana University football, and was the pre-game host for the Indiana Pacers in 1969, in addition to being the station manager and morning host at WBOW 1230am in Terre Haute, Indiana. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on Korea. In 1970, Tate began his long-time association with the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were in their first year of existence. The games were broadcast on WERE for the first two years. After then, owner Nick Miletti, who also owned the Cleveland Indians, or Cleveland's most powerful radio station, WWWE now WTAM in 1972, he moved both teams' radio broadcasts to WWWE. Tate was the radio announcer for the Indians from 1973 through 1979 along with Herb Score, and their TV announcer with a variety of partners from 1980 through 1987. However, prior to the 1980-1981 season, new controversial Cavs team owner Ted Stepien had a disagreement with WWWE. Consequently, the station gave the broadcasting rights back to Stepien, and Tate was released from his job as a result. Yet, many Cleveland fans mistakenly believe that Tate was fired by Stepien, organizing a Joe Tate night during the final home game of the season. The game had the highest attendance of any game in the prior four seasons, and during the game, fans led chants of Let's Go, Joe. Ted must go. In the interim, Tate was the radio announcer for the New Jersey Nets for the 1981-1982 season. The following year, he switched to television, calling play-by-play -play Chicago Bulls games on Sports Vision, the team's cable TV station. He also broadcast the CBS Radio College Game of the Week. When new owners Gordon and George Gunn the III bought the team, Tate returned to the Cavaliers for the 1983-1984 season and remained until his retirement in 2011. In 1987, he was named Vice President of Broadcast Services, a job that he held until his retirement. On March 26, 2008, Tate announced his 3,000th game for the Cavaliers against the New Orleans Hornets, where he sat at half-court. The radio broadcast location at the queue, at Section, was renamed the Joe Tate Perch in honor of this achievement. In November 2008, Tate signed a two-year contract extension, ensuring that he would be the team's radio voice until at least the 2010-11 season. However, he had a lifetime agreement with the team to serve in some capacity. In May 2010, the Basketball Hall of Fame announced that Tate would receive the 2010 Kurt Gary Media Award 
which was presented on August 2010. On May 17, 2010, WTAM announced that he would retire from broadcasting at the end of the 2011 season. During the 2010 preseason, Tate was hospitalized with pneumonia, and further testing showed he needed heart surgery. This would cause Tate to miss the most of the 2010-2011 season. Mike Snyder and Jim Jones were announced as the interim radio team during Tate's recovery. On March 25, 2011, it was announced that Tate would return to call the remaining home games of the season. On April 8, 2011, in a game against the Chicago Bulls, the Cavaliers honored Tate by having Joe Tate Appreciation Night and by raising a commemorative banner with Tate's name, his years as a Cavaliers broadcaster and a microphone next to the other Cavalier retired numbers. Tate's final game was the April 13, 2011 contest between the Cavaliers and Washington Wizards. The Cavaliers sent Tate out as a winner, defeating Washington 193. For 15 seasons during the basketball offseason, Tate was also a play-by-play -play voice for the Cleveland Indians on the radio from 1973 to 1979, then switching to television from 1980 to 1987. In 1992, he was inducted into the Radio Television Broadcasters Hall of Fame of Ohio. From 1997 to 2004, Tate also served as the radio play-by-play -play voice of the Women's National Basketball Association WNBA Cleveland Rockers. In 2004, Tate was selected as a founding member of the Indiana Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Beginning in 2008, Tate did play-by-play -play for the Mount Union College Purple Raiders, a Division III college football team, on regional cable TV sports network Sportstime Ohio. He was on the school's board of trustees. He also called high school basketball games for WEOLAM 930. In 2011, Tate co-authored his memoir, Joe Tate, It's Been a Rail Ball with sports writer Terry Pluto. The book covers his early years in broadcasting, his time with covering the Cleveland Indians and his career with the Cleveland Cavaliers. In July 2019, WEOLAM 930 launched a weekly podcast with Joe Tate entitled Over the Timeline that served as an overview of his career and also included audio from Tate's extensive reel-to-reel -reel tape collection. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting signature calls and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. It's basketball time at the Cleveland Arena Coliseum Gundek. Opening for Cavaliers home games when with a right left hand. For a Cavalier slam dunk. To the line, to the lane, when a Cavaliers player drives the lane for a basket three baller got it. A three point shot sights it, shoots it, got it. For free throw attempts this is Joe Tate. Have a good night everybody. What he said to end a broadcast it's a beautiful day night for baseball. What he started every baseball game with. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards personal life. Tate married his first wife in 1963. They were married 18 years and had three children, Christina, Karen and Joe. In 1983, he married his second wife, Jean. He and Jean resided in Lafayette Township, Medina County, Ohio. In the next segment, we'll be exploring death and its implications for our subject matter. Tate died in his home under hospice care March 10, 2021, after a lengthy battle with cancer. He was 83. Brace yourself for a captivating discussion on awards and honors as we explore its nuances and implications. Eight-time NSSA Ohio Sports Gasser of the Year 1974, 1976, 1978, 1991, 1996, 1999, 2002, 2003 Cleveland Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame Inductee Class of 1997 Ohio 
Broadcasters Hall of Fame inductee class of 1992 Indiana Broadcasters Hall of Fame inductee class of 2004 2010 Basketball Hall of Fame Kurt Gary Media Award 2012 OAC Bill Nichols Media Award Cleveland Press Club Journalism Hall of Fame inductee class of 2003 Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame inductee class of 2005 Voice of the Cavaliers Banner honoring his Cavs career included with the Cavaliers retired numbers at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse Radio Announcers Booth at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse renamed the Joe Tate Perch Broadcast Booth at University of Mount Union renamed the Joe Tate Broadcast Booth Cavaliers Wall of Honor Class of 2019. Thanks for being a part of this amazing journey. I can't wait to bring you more exciting content.